we wanted to have a short meeting today uh, because this is actually a very important moment in our institute's history this week. And I've written out a few remarks I'm going to make, and I'm going to introduce uh, Newell Arnrich to you, who's the architect, and he's going to talk a little bit about the new building. Uh, but I kind of want to set that up a little bit. Because um, I've been thinking a lot about this move. Uh, the context of the whole time that I've you know, been here at USC and been part of this institute. Let's go back to 1977. <laughs> Who wasn't born? <laughs> yeah, let's not ask that. Question. The summer of 1977, I sat down. It was about a year before I married my wife, Marianne, and uh, I recall having a conversation with my future father-in-law, where he said, you know, he was giving me his philosophy of life and uh, a lot about a lot of different things. But one of the things he said was, in order to keep from accumulating excess junk. He believed that every 10 years, one should burn everything they own and start over again. <laughs> and uh, while I remember at the time feeling that that view was a bit extreme, I'm kind of thinking right now that's a really great philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> well, this week does mark the end of an era, and it's the beginning of a new era. 11 years ago, uh, the Honorable Louis Caldera, who was the Secretary of the Army at the time, came out to Los Angeles to sign a contract with USC that would establish ICT as a university affiliated research center. His vision of the ICT was summed up in this quote. He said, ICT will be a joint effort of the Army, the entertainment industry, and academe, an innovative team to advance dazzling new media and ultimately benefit training and education for everyone in America. It's a great vision. And I'm here to tell you that I think we've made a lot of progress toward that, that vision. Uh, that speech was made at the Davidson Conference, Center, Davidson Conference Center at USC in August of 1999. And a couple of weeks ago, a group of us from ICT attended another meeting, uh, a luncheon. It was right next door to the Davidson Center at the School of Social Work. Uh, it was, uh, it was uh, to host the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the top military man in all the Defense Department, Admiral Mike Mullen. And he was being hosted by the USC School of Social Work. Admiral Mullen was there in part to celebrate the collaboration, key word, collaboration, between the School of Social Work and the ICT. USC President Steve Sample stood up at that meeting and he was the one who co-signed that contract with Louis Caldera when this place was originally formed. And he gave a speech at the luncheon where he said the following. He said, it's an honor and a privilege to discuss with you the important new technologies and initiatives that USC has developed for training military social workers. The credit for these innovations goes to Dean Flynn and her colleagues, the USC School of Social Work, Dr. Hill and his staff of researchers and designers in USC's Institute for Creative Technologies. As many of you know, the Institute ICT develops educational tools for the U.S. Army by combining the expertise of the Pentagon with the storytelling talent of Hollywood and the technological wizardry of the video game industry. In other words, we put the best minds to work on meeting society's needs and in the process knock down a lot of academic and professional silos. That means engaging the talent and expertise of our faculty and students from various disciplines across campus as well as bringing in experts from government, business, and the community. In other words, my friends, We've come a long way in the last decade, come a long way toward fulfilling that original vision for the Institute. As it was originally envisioned, ICT, we fulfilled that vision of being a, really a living and a complex collaborative or, organism uh, that seeks to break down all sorts of silos. And while the silos still remain out there to be broken, uh, we've We've broken down a lot of them, and I think that's what's made it possible for us uh, to have the success that we've had. Second, ICT has developed key technologies to advance training and education, making it possible to do things that were only a dream a decade ago. The Institute's garnered many awards and recognition from the technical community as well as from the entertainment industry uh, that, that, that uh, verify that. And finally, ICT has produced training prototypes that have impacted the lives of tens of thousands of members of the armed forces. 
and is now extending beyond training to education. Well, with the inauguration of the new building we're going to this week, we need to look forward. We need to reach further than we've reached before. If, if the first part of our mission is advancing training and simulation technology, we need to reach so high that the ICT becomes a household name, not just nationally, but internationally. We should be known as the technical and creative wizards working across disciplines to create media that will fundamentally change the game in education and training, healthcare, and entertainment. Very unusual in lights. If the second part of our mission is to create training prototypes that infuse Hollywood know-how for storytelling, game design, location-based entertainment techniques, our goal should be to touch every soldier, sailor, marine, airman, airwoman in the armed forces. We should be in the DNA of the armed forces. And if, and if the key thing uh, that makes it all work is collaboration, we need to continue to draw the finest minds in the world here to work on the technical challenges and innovations that will shape the next decade. We need to be an international hub of collaboration. We are already that. You can look around the room. You know that we, we are that. We need to, to extend even further. So what does this new building mean for us in that context? This new building is going to be an attractive showcase. We're going to be proud to bring the world there. there we're going to be able to show people the things that you're building. Not just show them those things, but Show them the people. There's going to be ample space for demonstrations and, dis and for displaying your products. This place is going to maximize our ability to collaborate, not only among ourselves, but with other universities, uh, with the national and the international community. This building has a large amount of what I think of as public space. And you're going to see examples of that, I'm sure, as, as Newell talks about it. Beautiful reception area, large theater, cafe, large meeting rooms, many, many conference rooms. Uh, and you're going to find that you know, it's going to be possible. You're going to have the ability to collaborate and bring in the world. We're going to be able to have conferences there. We should have seminars, series, workshops. I mean, we need to bring them in. And, uh, and and collaborate and let them see the great work that you're doing. It's also going to be a fun place to work. Uh, I'm a particularly enamored with the gym that they built, <laughs> at least the space I've seen, but uh, it's going to be a quiet room, a library, uh, a cafe. There's a game room. Uh, across the street, there are soccer fields that I see are already in use, basketball courts that are, that are there. There's an outdoor amphitheater and a, and a park for walking around. And all I encourage you to do is dream about how we can use that space. Think about it. So last Friday, I had the opportunity to view the IMAX movie called Hubble. Now, we're all going to see it again uh, this Friday if you go to Exposition Park. But I was down in San Diego, and I was surprisingly moved by that experience. I was trying to figure out why. Uh, but I think it was, there, there are two parts of it. One was it tells the story of the science and the engineering behind the Hubble telescope and how they've kept it running and how they've improved it over many years. It's an amazing feat from, from the perspective of the engineering and the science behind it. And I think you're going to be blown away when you see that this Friday. But the second part of the story is what that scientific instrument has told us about the universe. And, you know, I'm I'm used to hearing Carl Sagan talk about billions and billions of stars. When they start talking about billions of galaxies with billions of stars, trillions of miles, you know, uh, distances, uh, and it's mind-boggling. And it's uh, and the way they visualize it is, is beautiful. As we move forward, I want you to when you watch that movie to take inspiration from it. Think about it, what they did in that Hubble project, and what you're doing, and how you're going to fundamentally change the game in education, in training, in the technologies you're building, in the creative uh, enterprises you're involved in, the innovation uh, that, that takes place here. Think about how you're changing the game, and how 
how you're going to work together and how you're going to make a difference in this world. That's what I wanted to encourage you to do today because I know that uh, moving ranks up there in like the top five stressors, you know, all the things that can happen to you. That's okay. Six months from now, the pain will be gone. You won't remember this, okay? Like childbirth. Yes. <laughs> well, that's what keeps me going back to climbing mountains. I get up there and I'm going, man, it's hard. But there are a few people, before I introduce Newell, there are a few people I want to just, I think you should acknowledge, uh, we need to acknowledge, who've put out a tremendous amount of effort in, with respect to this move. And uh, starting with Daryl Spearman back there. Uh, Lori Weiss. She has a very hard job. <laughs> uh, Rob Groom and the IT team. I want to especially thank Cheryl Birch for all the work that she's done to get all the loans in place and everything else, the approval from the university to make this as possible. And I know I'm missing a lot of other people, but I mean, I think those are some of the primary ones, but I. I with that, I want to introduce the architect for this project and the one who's been managing it and keeping it on budget and on time, right? Rule <laughs> 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 <Joel> Arnerich. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. It's uh, my job also to remind you, you know, you all know where you're kind of moving, but you don't have the map. I'm going to show you a little bit about that. And as Randy talked about, um, you know, change is hard. And if you think about this, tonight, go home and sleep on the other side of the bed. Call me in the morning and tell me how you feel. You know, some might make it, but 90% of you will feel really uncomfortable. We are, as much as we are in all of us in the design business, whether it be research, we are really creatures of habit. So the habit that we have here is what we have in this facility is what we're leaving behind. We have to leave behind how we did it, how we used it, and think about the new place. And the new place, the first thing that comes to your mind is you say, well, it's not like what I had. And you're right. As Randy talked about the vision, you know, we tried to hit 90% of all the things that were asked for collectively. We had to make a budget. We had to do it on 16 weeks. We had a long list of things to do. But also is how to get more collaboration, how to get people out of your offices and, and to create some interfaces. Um, I wish I had more finished photographs, but because we did these last week, and when you move in, all the furniture and stuff will be in the look great. We're going to walk you through, show you some key dates about what's happening. Um, this is the week that we're moving. Starting tomorrow night, the first moves are going to occur. So Daryl is the point person on move. We have a mover who has been dropping off boxes. Barbara, myself, and Daryl will come through your actual desk if you happen to have a desk, if you have a workstation, don't worry about it. We'll talk about that in a minute. We're tagging where that goes. Because one of the other parts of change, you might have what's called a right-hand desk. You may have now a left-hand desk. And for some people, that's really hard because you're just so used to it. You need to think about how would I set up, how would I do that. That's just the, the world we live in. Some, some are right and some are left. So all of those moves will accomplish starting Wednesday night and each night thereafter all day on Friday while you're off and out of here so the movers will get in. And by Sunday evening, all the physical move will be done. IT has been very carefully pre-wiring everything. All the computers, all of those things will be set up. So Monday morning, the expectation is, as Randy said, change is hard. And it's going to take you a while to get back to business. Um, but what's being asked is to unbox as quickly as you can. First of all, to get rid of the boxes. We'll have the movers coming through um, late in the afternoon on Monday. We'll also have a cleanup crew that's going to come in and kind of try to get, because there's going to be paper dust and things that are all over. It's going to look great when you move in. It's going to get a little messy. And by the end of the week, the expectation is it will be um, looking great. The, um, um, the question that you may have is, where am I going to sit? And I'm going to kind of show you a little bit about graphically where they are and talk about some of the assets that we have here. Um, but I also wanted to um, 
uh, highlight some dates. This is the big party on the 28th of October. I think that's still the date. Um, the one item that we knew that we would not have completed, and that's because of the amount of interface for the video projection systems, um, is in the main theater. That's a 130-seat theater. When you see it, it's pretty dramatic. It's two stories high. So it's actually about two and a half times as high as this room, and about three or four times as deep. All of the conference rooms, every conference room you walk into is the same setup. There's a touch panel, and if it's turning on a projector, turning on the um, any of the devices, it's the exact same technology in every single room you go to. So you don't have to worry about, oh, in the fourth floor conference, we plug it in this way. All the plug-in capability is all built into all the tables, and they're identical on every one of those. So hopefully, even like when I show up and I go to a different conference room now, you have to learn how to do that, it's going to work the same in every room. So we also have in all of the lounge areas, particularly on the second floor, and we'll talk about in a second, is there's also a lot of power connections. And that's really for visitors, because they're going to have lots of mobile devices, laptops that need to be plugged in. So the theater, while it will look kind of finished, the electronics and the system, the testing of the video projection, the sound systems, it was really about mid-July, are not programming any functions in there. I think it's the first week of August um, is when that's going to start. Everything else will be uh, available as of next week. One of the things that we talked about was we were doing, um, in spirit, trying to do a green building. So we went through that process, and we held true to all those things. The materials, well, you'll see um, those woods, all the woods that we've used are all renewable. We've used recycled. The carpets are all recycled. The paint's in there. The reason if you walk in, you don't smell the paint, because there's no VOCs in it. So there's none of those organic compounds in there. So we have went through there. We didn't necessarily go through and do an official plaque that's going to be on the wall, but we went through the specifications, the building, the recycling of all the waste debris materials from construction and things like that. So the building is a gold certified building. We would have been a gold or a silver in the same sense. So we paralleled that, and I think that was just part of the spirit um, that we all wanted to help achieve. Um, our second floor has the opportunity. We do have um, right off of the both the events room, off of the, ca the cafe, we have direct access to the outside, and there are three doors that go in there. Visitors can come and go off of that floor as well. Um, the quiet room and the game room are on that floor. And I'll show you a physical plan of where they're located. So those assets, we did get those in, and some of those have really kind of neat things. All employees, if you are driving, or uh, arriving by a vehicle, um, there's a door that comes off the garage. And this is the secure door to come in. If you're coming by shuttle from main campus back and forth, that stops out front. Um, that'll come through the front door. All of the doors, including we have a direct access into the uh, shared locker rooms, um, those are all um, access only. When you get in the elevator, you cannot go anywhere in the building without having your access card. That's just another level of security. The floors are really large, and since there's a lot of public space on the second floor, you're not going to necessarily have people sitting there to see what's going on. So from a security point of view, the, those decisions were made. There's a water feature that's here. There's a waterfall that when you walk in, and part of our lead and our kind of green concept is introduction of water for both sound and sort of that um, uh, feeling that we're tied back to nature. The new staircase, which I'll show you a, a photograph of, is to help get people up and down between the first and second floor when there's large tours and groups. Um, pretty much the first floor is that. There's a little bit of show and tell that's going to happen on there, um, but most of that begins in the second floor. That was kind of the plain lobby. Um, again, this is under this was under construction last week. It's a glass stainless steel um, uh, staircase that comes up, um, and then there's a waterfall that looks like this. In front of it, there will be a, um, a logo that hangs for identifying ICT. Just introducing some of the materials of the um, uh, uh, renewable materials. And again, we lived as true as we could to get as much natural light in this, with the exception of the lamps. Obviously, the lamps, other than two, have no natural light at all. That was, that was what was requested. So all the ceilings, when you get in, you'll notice the ceilings slope up. All the light in there is indirect. Um, 
and you'll see that when you get there. And it makes sense, maybe not so much on the drawing, but when you're there three-dimensionally, you'll be able to see that. And this just shows a little bit of the fourth floor, how the ceiling slopes. So typically on the floors, they all the, if you're on the west face, the ceiling slope high to the west side. Um, and that's true of two, three, and four. So if you're on the second floor, obviously your, your room identification or your semi-private work environment is two, zero, two, whatever. All the numbering system starts here. This is 200 or 300 or 400. It goes clockwise. So 202. So this floor here, this is the staircase. So this would be Waterfront Drive. So the park is on this side. Sentinella is on there. So everything that's in yellow is publicly accessible. So the public can get into those spaces. This is the game room. It has its own windows directly to the outside. These doors are secured if there's a tour or anything going on so that people don't come into that environment. IT is in this area over here. The help desk will be on this floor. There are secure doors to get into that work environment. The rest of this environment is not secure. The tackle lab, which is now on the second floor, will be here. There's a screening room that's there. These are also lab spaces that are there. The quiet room is the blue area. Right next to that is the gymnasium. The gymnasium is about twice the size of what we have. Um, purple areas are research areas. Um, and that lab is called the it's motion. The motion. No, motion. No, it's the motion. Yeah, motion's lab. Oh, I'm sorry, the lab, I think. Yes, the motion's lab. Sorry, yeah. um, so help desk, if there's an issue, help desk is here. The most important So don't go there. No, <laughs> it's actually, they're way ahead of the game. So uh, who's leaning on our table? You know, we're in a box. This is how good IT is here. <laughs> Actually, we disconnected everything. This is called the events room. This is a multi-purpose room. Seats about 50 people. It can be set up for um, classroom seating, um, as shown here. This room is important for the first couple of days. That's the lost and found. <laughs> so room 205, second floor, is lost and found. We'll probably have an area that's going to have piles and piles of electrical stuff, such as power strips. You know, we're not going to know how to go. They're going to get disconnected, bagged, and They'll end up in one place, so you'll be able to come there and grab those. If you're missing a box, it'll it'll live in this spot, and we'll keep that up. These tables, fortunately, all roll out of the way. This is all the cafe. There's a large kitchen that's here. There's a secondary kitchen that's there. It's kind of for Maggie and the events folks, locked storage, things like that. Um, the theater's main entry are on these sides. There's also a third floor. If you're on the third floor, you can come in the back of the theater and come down. There's all lounge seating. All of these um, um, seated areas all have power built into them, so when guests and people are on tours, they can plug in and go. Um, another waterfall feature, when you get off on the second and third floor, there's a waterfall that's on the glass. We've also sound sealed it, so when you're having the conference in there. In theory, you can turn the water on and off. Um, the water folks tell us they'd better see the water stay on all the time because it's easier to keep the glass clean. But the idea was you can turn it off, um, and it's clear glass and a beautiful view. When you're having a meeting, you turn the switch on and the water goes on and it distorts who's sitting in there. So, uh, a fun thing to do. Um, mail room, another important area, uh, is right here. So that's kind of central, it's in the quasi public. And of course, facilities. Daryl is right up next to the quiet room. Very accessible in the public space. Everybody will find Daryl. Um, and the other folks, this is uh, Jeff Carter. So, down in this area, this is HR. This is help desk, IT, the IT equipment, their workroom, and then kind of starting there around is um, the business office. So the business office, other than Cheryl, um, is all on this floor here. So again, numbers, this would be 200, 201, 202. Numbers all go clockwise. Any questions on two before we? And Hannah will also be on the floor. Oh, I'm sorry, Hannah. Uh, no. Yes. Yeah, you'll notice there's some really thick walls. Um, bit, first, I'll start with the theater. The theater's isolated, so we built a structure within a structure, and we've isolated that, and we hired Charles Salter and Associates. They're considered the best acoustical engineers. They do performing arts. Um, they do recording studios. They have consulted with us, um, and we've isolated the sound in these major rooms, um, this being 
also the quiet room, those walls are like 15, 16 inches thick, um, multiple layers of definitions in there. That is a cu totally cushioned floor, so it, it's, um, it's kind of like being on one of those soft conveyor belts. It's a little soft on there, but it's designed to help uh, soak up all that sound. There'll be a bench uh, in the front, and again, the actual locker rooms are all downstairs. And those are both men's and women's showers, um, and actual lockers that you can lock things up in as well. So, male, um, events rooms, some public space, research, business office, IT, HR, um, and the main theater. So the public, if they're going to the theater, will go in and out only on the second floor. Third floor is staff only because it's a secure door. And a little bit of what some of the images might look like. Um, this is the events room. We have plastic on the floor since we're going to take things in and out. Um, this is the main conference room when you come off of two. You're looking at, you can always tell where you are if you're on two looking for the screening room. It's a circular room. Um, the theater, um, it's just about carpeted. The seating's going in. Um, so by Monday when you move, and it'll look like it's finished, but in fact, it's none of the equipment will be working. Um, this is part of the kitchen. Maggie's kind of hidden areas down there. There's a washer dryer. By the way, the washer dryer is not for personal use. <laughs> it is not designed for that kind of look. It's really for linens and things like that. Um, so, uh, but anyway, this gives you a sense of scale. I'm standing here at the bottom. There is a control booth at the top, um, and there's a little hidden control booth with a, uh, you know, somebody behind the screen and the curtain that's down there as well. So. The theater plan, um, again, this door up here is at the third floor level. It's um, card access only. So if you want to go into the theater, and you can also walk around the back without disturbing anybody to kind of see what's going on. And then the um, uh, control room is above in that area. That's just a little cross section of what it looked like. Um, Challenges are somebody says, well, why isn't the screen tall? When you actually see the screen, we made the screen as physically as big as we can. Um, one of the things we have to be careful of is for ADA compliance, is you actually have to have a screen that meets certain parameters of how far you turn your head. So there's compromises um, to make sure that everybody has the same view. Third floor. This floor is primary research and labs. Labs. Speed this up. The names are not all up to date, so just look at numbers. Yeah, there are no, not, there are no names on this one. Because <laughs> we're trying to keep up. Labs are basically around the core. So, this, I'm going to start here. These are graphics labs that are here. There's a central small kitchen that's on this floor, central copying, series of labs. These we call double labs. You can either make them a large room, divide them up. There's doors dividable in those. This is the new sound studio. Um, this is film edit. Um, in the four corners are all conference rooms. And again, these all have uh, built-in technologies, same as the larger conference room here. Another water feature here. I'm going to show you also what the water, the um, semi-private, there are sort of gathering conversation areas. So it's kind of soft lounge. So instead of sitting on the floor, you can, but there's actually kind of a stuff you can take a nap on. Um, so the icons we talked about, these were these movable icons that were in between. They are movable. We just asked, don't move them. Let Daryl do that. Um, they do move, but they're very large. They're very heavy. And what they are is on both sides is they have um, either single-sided, so they have marker boards. So they're whiteboards. There's lots of whiteboards. All of the semi-private um, workstations also have marker boards, a full wall that's inside them. So we'll show you what those and the idea is that there isn't the removable as, as research groups kind of come and go, shrink, um, do that. Those icons can kind of be moved to help define some of that space and give a sense of a gathering space um, um, to collaborate on those things that are important to be graphically done. So that's sort of what one of the new semi-private. This um, up here is all whiteboard in all of those. This shape right there is a sliding door. This is the door when it's closed. Um, and again, it just kind of keeps the area. The work environments that were here were just kind of like little alcoves. These are about three, three and a half times the size, so it's a completely defined area. Um, and we've made almost all of those the same. And the only exception are if, it's, if you're in an admin position, 
um, it's lower because it has transaction tops that you can interact. The other ones are intended, you open the door, somebody comes in. There's a bench in 96% of all those stations. Or some, there's actually a bench so somebody can sit down. Um, instead of having to bring a chair and you've got a bench in there, you can actually collaborate on that and then a U-shaped working line. Um, this is just some of the, the furniture's kind of movable um, cushions, almost like ottomans that move around. Some are actually couches. Again, all the lighting is indirect, and this is while it was under construction, so it's not really beautiful looking photographs. Yeah. Uh, this happens to be the third floor kitchen. Um, we're just we're putting in the glass in there. So, the, the whiteboard. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but that's whiteboard, um, and again, the whiteboard is on all of the. Um, they also have four. Yes, there's. Uh, it's. Uh, it doesn't look like it it's because it's blue. It's just kind of. Barbara's picked a great color to make it all blend. If you touch it, you'll notice that it feels soft. It's um, self-healing cork, um, and then it's in all the work, um, semi-private work. Fourth floor. Fourth floor has a combination. Um, uh, most of the executive team is there, but there's also research. Um, uh, there are lab spaces. These are combination labs and or offices. There are three conference rooms. This is the one off of Randy's office. Uh, this is what's kind of called the similar executive conference room that's on six here, um, and another large conference room there. The one, the only real takeaway we had from this space was it was asked that we take away the, the concept of the amphitheater. So we did pull that over in a similar kind of fashion. Though it's not a place, again, just like this, you can't put all of you in there. The theater and the, and the cafe are more for that. Um, the one fun thing on this floor is there is um, an outdoor um, terrace that's out here, which will have um, furniture for luncheon. Um, we tried to, in the third floor and the fourth floor, to put a dining table in. So if you've got a team up to about 10 people, maybe even 12, you can actually sit down to have lunch or do something as opposed to sitting in a conference room. And then there's also lounge seating that's in there. This kitchen is open. You can pass through this way, around here, or through the kitchen. So uh, I'll just give you a little geography. Randy, Cheryl, Kimla Masters, Bill Sword Out, and Lori, and Skip. 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 Yes, thank you. I, I can't remember all the other names uh, that are around. Uh, so <laughs> there is um, this here, too, is sort of a gallery space. And you'll see as time evolves, Lori's working on this. You know, to tell the story both electronically on the second floor, there are flat screens that go along the hallways. So those flat screens can be set up so that if there's a conference going on, individual groups can display their information, have a table out there with movable tables to come in and out. And the same thing, there's fixed type of opportunities. So this is a conversation lounge space with a great view out to uh, the park, but also has gallery space to show the history, the awards, the recognition, and things like that. And it'd be probably more of that on the second floor, but also opportunities up here. And these um, exits, you do have staircases. This um, floor is only two thirds the size of the third, um, second and third floor. So that second exit is kind of down a staircase. This is actually the exit of the building. And all that green area is kind of roof guard. You can't really walk on it, but it's there to capture water. Um, I forgot to mention on the, s the third floor, there also is a green room that is for both um, uh, the recording studio for when actors have come in and also for the graphics lab um, to do makeup and has a restroom facility. And these just show this is what an admin station looks like. So it has a transaction top, so it's a little bit more interactive with a person. Um, this is kind of uh, um, the theater. The, carpet wasn't on here yet. That's the fourth floor. When you come out of the elevator, instead of being a water wall there, that goes into the lounge space and a view out to the park. That's the table in the executive conference room. And by the time you come in Monday, all of that, all the paper and all the protection uh, will be down on that. Um, there's just a little bit. If you have an office that faces north on the fourth floor, there was a natural bench that was built in there. Um, so we apologize, we couldn't do benches elsewhere. There's actually a structural concrete beam that's in that spot. So it looks like we designed it, we didn't. It was just, it was just there. But it does look like a nice bench. 
Um, and this is just the, um, the kitchens. The, this is the kitchen at the back. It's a curved kitchen. The dining room table there, the glass. A small kitchen serves the front lobby near Randy's office. And, then, and that's it. So again, number system, fourth, third floor. Always when you come out of the elevator, the room that you're looking at is either 200, 300, or 400. Turn to your right, all the numbers go clockwise. And then, guys, one thing to remember too, which is something Daryl and I spoke a lot about, mm -hmm. is the numbering scheme of the rooms. So because of the way that the, that the floor is designed and you bounce kind of back and forth between the interior and the exterior, numbers are, are, are going to bounce. So on the second floor, you go from 220 to 225 on the on the on the um, on the window, but then you jump into other numbers on the interior. So just it, it does go in clockwise, but it does bounce around a little bit. So if you're looking for something that you think should be on the outside, it may be on the inside. So just keep that in mind when you're walking around. So when you show up, we are going to have, and we're, we're making um, a unilateral decision that you can play with later. But for the movers, they can only have one decision. So we are showing, similar to if you're in an office now, it's going to be a similar layout, either left hand or right hand. So we're doing a little plan. So when the mover shows up and he's got the desk, they've got to make the commitment because Rob's team has to get in there, hook up the um, IT stuff, get your computers and all that stuff going. So we'll do that. So if there's a need to want to tweak those late, um, you can work with Daryl how to do that. Um, but primarily the power and the infrastructure, we had to make a decision where it goes in the office. And just for cost reasons, you can't put it on every, every wall. So pretty much so it's located on one wall. Uh, the advantage is, is that IT came up with a really cool way of doing these three com ports, so you have a lot more capacity in each office um, to plug in more devices. Lastly, I'll ask you to, um, you know, wear your um, happy face. Um, <laughs> and I know there, this is this is true, and I know this is we're all adults, and you're all really bright people. People will be angry, people will be happy, people will be crying, and people won't know what going on and the other people say, eh, it's fine. <laughs> so pick and choose the one you want, but keep it to yourself because the real world we have, we have built as much of the vision that we can. And you know what? At, at, as soon as we're moving in, they're already looking, maybe we've got to grow. You know, the, the success of your organization where you're headed is clearly, you know, this is this is a new beginning, a new opportunity. How to use it differently, how to work in a slightly different way. But most importantly, this building is a hodgepodge of ideas and evolutions, and some that were other people's ideas that were just leftover space. So the opportunity here is to take as much vision. IT is going to look brilliant, at least for one year. <laughs> and the reason why? Because it, everything's hit. It's all built in. It's perfect. It'll run great. And then somebody will come up with a new idea and a new toy, and then off we go. Um, but hopefully that you'll, you'll appreciate all the work that particularly IT has put in this and from the executive team to find the amount of resources to get the connectivity, to be able to demonstrate your work on different media formats, um, I think is extraordinary. I mean, you don't in this marketplace, don't see this much effort put in. So while 90%, you know, if, if you've got 90% of what you want, that's great. If you're in that 10%, you might not have, you know, um, roll with it. You know, find the opportunities, how you can work with it, um, and as you go forward, instead of it saying, maybe it doesn't work, is it, how can I make this work, and how can we go about that? And some have bigger spaces, and some have smaller, and that's just the real world of the, if we could design the whole building ourselves, the shell and everything, you could make those decisions. You know, we bought a almost bought a building, <laughs> at least for 10 years. <laughs> it feels like we're buying it. Um, you know, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity, and it really has, as Randy said, all the wonderful opportunities. Um, but it is different. We are in a different location. And I have to attest, there's the new cafe. You know, you can go get coffee and things like that. It's actually a really great place. The food there is fabulous. It's really reasonable. Um, and hopefully you'll enjoy that. And again, Starbucks is, you know, across the street. It's a little further. A little longer one. So. Anyway, thank you. I just want to also thank uh, Barbara. Um, <laughs> if you really have complaints about the office setup, it's her fault. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, she's going off yeah. on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so.
So, yes, you have a question. Well, I just wanted to say, I've never, I've, I've been through a lot of corporate moves, and I've never been in one where so much input has been taken from everybody and really listened to and acted upon. And you guys have, have made this a really wonderful experience, and I think taken a lot of the stress out of it. So, wow. thank you. Great, thank you. Well, any questions about the actual move aspects or anything? So are the phone number is going to be the same. Uh, yeah. So the the phone numbers the phone numbers will actually transfer mm -hmm. for now. Uh, we're looking at getting a standardized block of numbers because we have numbers that are all over the place and very difficult to sort of manage from from our standpoint. But for at least six months, the numbers will remain the same. Uh, we have to petition the FCC and go through a whole bunch of rigmarole to try and get a block of numbers. So we are in that process, um, and it will, it will take a while. So for right now, all the numbers will transfer exactly as they are. So should we wait till we get the new numbers to get this new business cards? <laughs> because you know we don't want to get them and then just don't order huge. Blocks. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. order. I wouldn't order huge bulk blocks. But from what I understand. Uh, we're a, we're still waiting for the paperwork from Verizon to send to the FCC, and then it's it's three to six months minimally. Which we're figure it's probably a year, um, realistically, when you're dealing with government agencies like that. But at some point, we probably will roll the numbers to something new. Uh, so, as Cheryl said, I think if you want to get business cards, we, you can go ahead and get business cards. But I would I would get instead of getting a quantity of 500, maybe get a quantity of 100. Do they even sell them in quantities? I don't know. Yeah. Just I, get whatever the minimum is. Mean, get whatever the minimum are. is. I mean, I don't know what the numbers are because I don't want to do that. But. <laughs> yes? I may have missed on the floor plans you showed on the slides. Can you indicate which direction is north? Uh, north on the, all the plans is towards Sentinella. South is towards the park. So if you always think about the length of the building. Uh, and the other thing, don't forget, um, those floor plans look small there. It's equal to three and a quarter floors here, right? So if you take one through three or six through th uh, four plus a quarter of another floor, that's how big those floors are. So there's a lot more of you. So to walk from one other end and to find somebody in room 404, it's a bit of a walk. Uh, it's really big scale. So, yeah. yeah. Just a logistical question. So I drive in Monday morning and I go under the building, I assume. Is there a gate, an attendant? How do I get in? Yes. Access cards. You'll have access. ID card will be for security purposes, it'll be for parking. Uh, elevators, it'll be for parking, it'll be for everything. And it's the same cards we already have? No. No, no. no. We will get new cards. Please. On Friday, Daryl will be passing out uh, all your new cards for that. Good Where question. Thursday. 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 This is Guests will uh, be valet. Guests will drive up in the valet service and take, you know, take their cards. One thing to remember, guys, if I can just jump in real quick, Daryl, when you guys pull into the uh, into the parking lot and you park, in both of the entrances that have the elevator, there's a big red wall painted. You want to head to the red wall and go into the, into the entrance door there, and then there's either if you go in on the um, on the second floor, it's it's elevators only. On the first floor, there is a staircase that will take you upstairs if you'd like to walk. Otherwise, you can go around the corner, and there is there is the elevators. But you want to look for the red wall and the big sign that says. 12015. You can't miss it when you drive in, into the uh, into the parking garage. And if, if you come in from the east side, it's going to be on your left hand side. Uh, it's going to be the first sort of parking area that you come to. We do have there are two parking levels, um, and the building's split levels. So when you're at the front of the building, that's P1. So the lobby and parking level P1. That's really for gas. Employee parking is P2. And P2 you get to off of Sentinella. And you'll see it. You can't miss it. I'm sorry, coming, from coming, from coming from Sentinel. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's easier to get into P2 off of that. A lot. But the four buildings share space. Yeah. So it's one huge underground garage. And building number three is not occupied. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> what is this set up for bicycles? Uh, and bicycle is on, I'm glad you asked that. Um, right on the lobby, when we had the lobby, that door that you would come into as an employee if you happen to be on that level, um, the bicycle um, racks, the walking racks are right there. Uh, this, this space has real security. I have to tell you, we have brand new leather chairs sitting in the parking garage and nobody has touched them because it's 24-7 security. 
They close all the gates on this, so all the bicycles, if you happen to leave it overnight, it's locked in a secure facility. Six Unlike six o'clock at night, guys, clockwork, everything's locked up, gate comes down, nobody can get in. I mean, I've been over there a lot late, unfortunately. Can you get out? But you can always get in and out. You can always get in and out in your car, but I mean, yes, if, you don't your have, if you don't have a key, an access card, um, or you know, you, you're driving a car to get up to the gate, you can't get in. Um, and security is very visible. They're walking around a lot. They're very visible. So it's, it's a pretty secure space. Yeah. Other questions? Um, there are four buildings right there. Which which one is it? Like in oh, terms of the east one. to west. We are the far, farthest east building. Oh, sweet. Right. The first two buildings um, at the west side. Those are both Falcon buildings. The third building, by the way, is where the cafe is downstairs. They have indoor dining, outdoor. It's empty. That's a vacant building right now. But so the we're the fourth one. Cafe opened uh, about three weeks ago. Oh, by the way, that's the breakfast sandwich, and it's two dollars and fifty cents, <laughs> and they make it right there. It's fresh. I gotta try this more. It's really good. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Yes. How about the location of our computers and our desks? Can we indicate where we want them so that we don't get in there and then? No, that's have a great. That's a, that's a great question. So one of the things. We have, Daryl and I have contracted with a company called Intervene. You're going to see some people coming in, unhooking your computer, and you're going to be like, whoa, Rob, Rob's not here. You can't take this computer. Um, we've contracted with this company. You can probably see 15 or 20 folks come around, bag up your computers. And one of the things that they do is that they mark on your desks where your computers go. And then when we move to the new location, they're going to put the computers back into the, into the location as closely resembles what you have here what as possible. Here, <laughs> See, we then, only have one grommet here, so the wires can only. Then we're going to have. Then we're going to have to move when you get there. Okay. Um, yeah, especially your case, if, if you're you in can a. Put it wherever you want. If you're in a workspace, if you're in a workstation, um, you know, deal with what what we can when we get there. We'll come around and we'll move stuff around for you guys. We've got 375 computers to hook up by Monday, um, and about 500 monitors. So. We're going to do our best to get things set up where you want. As Noel alluded to a little while ago, not everybody's going to be exactly happy where things are set up. We will come around. We will move stuff. We will help to get it set up right. But we're going to try to place things in locations that make the most sense if you're not transferring over in a similar type office. Now, if you're transitioning over from a similar type office, but the handedness is different, but well, we're just going to mirror it. You know, so if you work. If you have one of the one of the smaller offices here, and you work in with the return, and you work on the side, well, if we set it up. We're going to set it on the return on the other side. You know, we wouldn't set it up in the front or in the back. We'd set it up as as closely resembling what you have here as possible. Um, and again, we're going to do our best to set it up so that it's, it's functional and works. But again, we can absolutely move it once we get in. So um, I was just going to just add all of the furniture that goes in. No, can I, can I add something? Yep. And, and understand, the first week or two, IT and facilities will be overwhelmed. So if, if IT doesn't get out to move your monitor, like that first day, you know, give, give them a break. <laughs> yeah, their goal is to make sure what are, what is connected works. Um, much less. I, I was just going to add that if you're, um, all the private office furniture, um, basically all the furniture other than public furniture or conference rooms, it's existing. So we are taking uh, a lot of our own furniture here. So um, if you had a monitor arm on that desk and you happen to end up with the same kind of desk, you can do that. We've ordered for Rob uh, an inventory of monitor arms, and particularly if you're in a workstation, semi-private workstations, there's a lot of ways to set that up. And our advice is, uh, like, go there, kind of get the feel of where you want it. Don't have them go drilling a hole and putting it in and say, well, I really want it over here. Um, you know, kind of sit there. You know, if you don't have a stand in your monitors, then you're going to have to have it. We have a C-clamp type. It can be hooked up in a few minutes. And it can be moved around a little bit. So, I mean, yeah. there's, you know, we're trying to build in some flexibility with the space. You know, monitor arms that are, are very movable. Um, you know, the, the bases, the clamps that, that Noel mentioned, are, are, we can slide them around the desk a little bit. So, I mean, we, we do have some, some flexibility in what we're installing. Um, and, again, we're going to do our best. But, as Daryl said, we're going to be a little bit busy. <laughs> The next couple of weeks, uh, so you know if your your mouse is a little dirty, you know, give us give us give us a little bit to get you to one. Um, but we'll 
we'll come around and, and we'll we'll help tweak everything and move everything around. We'll move your CPU around. You know, oh my foot's hitting it. That's fine. We'll we'll, we'll get in there and we'll do all that. What about the speaker systems that are with your computer? Uh, okay, so really quick, well, the, the people who are here, you want to, anything you want to get from point A to point B, put a tag on it. Um, if you want, if you want your speakers to go, tag them. Um, if it doesn't have a tag, it goes to the lost and found, and it will end up also in the electronic pile. Yeah. yeah. So it's something well, you really want. What a down tag. Well, except do not tag, do not tag your desk. <laughs> That will be, Barbara has worked this out, it is a mess. Do not tag your desk. Right. And, your and desk. Tag chairs? The <laughs> chairs, <laughs> yes. Tag chairs. Chairs are yours, but this is real clear. Do not tag your desk. Say this out loud. Do not tag your desk. <laughs> because if you tag your desk and you have a left and, we, and you're in a right-hand office, that poor mover is going to go, I don't know where to go. It'll be chaos. So Barbara and I are going through with Daryl. We're physically tagging it. We apologize. It's the only way to do it. If we're ordering new furniture, you wouldn't have to worry about it. But we've got a... Do we tag our own computers also? Yes. Yeah. Tag, yeah. tag your computers, tag your phones, tag and your monitors, tag anything that you want to go from point A what about to those, point B. Um, chairs? We're, so we're keeping the same chairs? Yes. Yeah. What about things like the little uh, cabinets with um, your, you know, yeah. clothes thing? And tag it. Tag it? Tag yes. Tag it. Those go okay. with you. Yes. Uh, just the desk. Everything except the desk. Everything because the desk is the handle. The desk is the handle. We're not taking. We're not tagging our trash things, are we? we are. So, okay. One real quick thing, guys. If you have a bunch, if you have a bunch of external drives, you have a bunch of periphery. Grab a blue tub. Put them in the blue tubs. You know, and then tag the blue tub. Tag the blue tub. Because regardless of whether or not you tag all your drives individually, you want them all together. You want them as as, as stable and solid as possible. Um, so put all that stuff in a blue tub, tag it, let it get it over there, and then we can unpack it real quick. There's a question about that. Is it going to be possible before the move to actually get like a copy of the floor plan with the room number so we can actually see where we are before we get into the building? Just, we'll email it to you. Okay. Or, or leave them up here. Post it, yeah. <laughs> post, it, post it on the internet. Yeah, we'll yeah. send it out. We'll post it. Yeah. Yeah. I have one other question for temporary workers. This doesn't really, I guess this is more for HR. How are we supposed to fill out our time cards for Friday? Jeff will send out an email that tells you how to do your time sheets okay. for Friday. It's a work day. Yes, right back. When we give back the keys and badges, this Ah, uh, very good question. Daryl. We, we will collect those when we issue the new and the badges. Okay, you don't get the new one without the old one, so. <laughs> we'll work it out. <laughs> <laughs> Donation. <laughs> It's only $45. So did everybody hear that, that Daryl, on Friday when Daryl's passing out your new Thursday. access card? Thursday. Thursday, sorry. That you need to have your old turn your keys in. And then you, you also got to stay out of here, right? Friday, you know, you're out. Well, we're locking everyone out. It's, yeah. We're locked out at 6 o'clock on Friday. Yeah. We're we'll our badges in so we can't get there you go. One thing, too, guys, is I've, I've, uh, I've spoken to Randy about this. And on Thursday evening, I know that we've basically asked everybody to get out at 6 o'clock. We'd like everybody to shut their computers down around 4.30 or 5 o'clock so that we can get a head start of the movers. Um, you know, I think a lot of people are going to be finishing up packing real quick and the, oh my god, I didn't get this packed, I gotta put it all in this box and throw it in my car. Um, we need to get in and try and get the computers, uh, at least start to begin to get the computers taken down 6th floor, 5th floor, 4th floor, floor, as quickly as possible so that the movers can begin taking apart all of the furniture and, and getting the furniture moved, because that's really going to be the bulk of the movement. Um, so, you know, between 4.30 and 5 o'clock, we, we'd appreciate it. If there's extenuating circumstances, you need to have your system up until 6, you know, I, I can understand that. But at 6 o'clock, everything's down. Yes. What's the plan for uh, access to servers, uh, especially email and, and uh, SDNs and so on during the process? Um, Thursday, everything will be up Thursday. Uh, Friday morning at 7 a.m., we'll be moving the fiber connection from it points to this building to the new building. At that point, we'll be moving SVN mail and all and boss all of those servers over to the new building. We'll be down for approximately two hours or so, uh, and so they should be back online by ten or eleven o'clock in the morning on uh, on Friday. And then they'll be good. That's yeah, and then they're stable. Yeah. So some be patient. We've moved some. We've moved okay. some. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll them some slack. No, we have, I mean, we have a lot of uh, we have the paper deadline Friday, and uh, also reviews to start the busy time. 
Well, it's a busy time for me too. So we're going we're to do our best and get everything back online as quickly as possible, as we've always done uh, during these situations. Um, there's already some folks who we've moved some computers over, uh, some servers over, so we're actually running in the new building now. Uh, I appreciate everybody's patience this morning. We had a, a power test today. We have one tomorrow, uh, which is why I'm not moving more things over because I know that we're going through we're going through some inspections. Um, I will let everybody know when that happens. But once we move over on Friday, then then we're up. We're uh, then we're up in solid for for good. And uh, I'm hoping we just have a couple of hours of downtime. Sure. Um, are we sending out move cards so that people know our new addresses or? I, I think it would be best to do that electronically, you know, rather than send out postcards. But we can do but like for postcards. The things will still get forwarded. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And what about our um, travel cards and pro cards? It's already been we, Okay. So we can use the new address when we order stuff. Right. We Darryl, still use the old it, billing address. Daniel's sending out emails as he moves the pro cards. Like I got my oh, email okay. yesterday. Okay. Cheryl, your pro card, your travel card also now is here's the address. Oh, right. So Daniel pumps totally on top of that. Okay. You'll have an email that gives you all that information. Okay. You probably will be getting it. My guess is today or tomorrow. I I saw the sample and got mine already. Great. Any other questions? So thank you all. Thank you for your patience. Um, go pack and then have fun innovating.